not just mere words, but does your action indicate that is your source? Can you remember the relationship the way it used to be? The bubble in your heart, the commitment to your work, the unending love on a daily basis. As you come into his presence tonight, as you partake of this, of his body and his blood tonight, ask that you will be connected to him again. Ask that you will stay connected. Ask that everything that is a wedge between you and him, the power of God will remove tonight. Every insulator, every gap, every partition that may have kept you away or separated you in one way or the other, ask that the power of God will make those things to be removed tonight. That at the end of this service, there will be a burning fire in your heart, even for the King of Kings. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we want to just spend a few minutes talking about you. It is important, Heavenly Father, that we feel you so that the words will not be mere words. So we ask for your presence to be awesome even as we talk about you. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for the choir. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Stay connected to your source. We all know that for you to receive from anything, you must stay connected to it. And if something happens to be your source, if you break the connection, your supplies cease. My prayer is that your supplies will not cease. Amen. As long as you are connected to the source of favor, you have constant favor. As long as you are connected to the source of power, you have power. Unfortunately, it's getting more and more difficult for believers to stay connected. And this is predominantly due to two reasons. The first reason is what I would call self-reliance. People are beginning to get so confident in themselves that they're beginning to think that God may not be all that. It's not the first time it will happen. It's always happened. God has always been treated like that. There was a time in the history that people walked up to God and said they want a king. They wanted another king apart from him. But the second reason I feel that um, people are getting disconnected is that there's a persuasion from the devil. But that's what the kingdom of darkness does. The kingdom of darkness will identify your source of connection and do whatever it can to break it. It's an assignment they have and the goal is to diminish your resources and they know that for them to diminish your resources and your resources come in so many forms. The goal is to diminish your resources, and for, them to, for, for your resources to be diminished, they know they have to break your connection to the source. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he knows that as long as you are connected to the source, totally connected, his job is difficult. And that's why in John 10, 10 God gave an option. He says, I have come too. If you hang on to me, 
you will have an abundant life. But it's always a choice. Now, so let's look at two ways quickly. How, how do we break our connections? Or how does our connection get broken? There are two ways we're just going to look at because we're going to have our own coming on very soon. We break our connections, which is the first one, intentionally. Everybody say intentionally. intentionally. That was the case in the book of Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 12. We know the story of the prodigal son. Even though the father was clearly the source, it was very clear that the source of his blessed life, the enjoyment he was having, was his father. Yet he requested for a separation. And he was intentional about it. He was intentional about his desire to separate. He walked up to his father and said, you know what, there's something that is due to me, can I have it now? Forgetting that if he had stayed connected, he would have been consuming those things and they would have been constantly replenished. Because the father was what? The source. He looked at his, um, which is another thing that we all do. He looked at a deal. There was a deal in front of him. And the deal was that, you know what, I'm going to get a few billions or a few millions. The deal was so irresistible. It was too good for him to pass on. So he intentionally separated himself. Or he looked at his present source and his needs. And he decided that this present source is not fully satisfying my needs. So let me look for another source. That's why I want to advise you tonight that when you have an offer, and we have offers all the time, we have offers all the time. As I speak, there are offers on the table for you. The offer the East prodigal son took was always on the table. The option for him to go to his father and collect what was due to him was always there. But he chose to exercise that option that particular day, intentionally. So whenever you have an option, when you have an option, consider it very well before you intentionally break your source. It's not all that glitters that's gold. And it's not all that looks well that ends well. He had a package, he looked at it and he said, you know what, I can do better on my own than with my father. So let me go. So he broke the connection. We know the end of the story. Now, this for me is the easier one because the devil does not mind us breaking connection intentionally. When you break connection intentionally, you know your error and you can come back to your senses. And that was what happened to the prodigal son. He came back to his senses because he did it intentionally. But there's a worse way. The second way is a worse way. You can break connection unintentionally. Everybody say unintentionally. When you break connection intentionally, which is, you know you, what you did. So when you come to your senses, you can revert. But when you break connection unintentionally, your connection is usually broken gradually. And because it is gradual, you may not even know you have broken connection until it is broken. Are you with me? The devil prefers this particular way of breaking connection. He prefers it. It prefers a way that you yourself may not know what is happening to you. A young man got married. And after a while, he was having problems with his wife. So he went to his father and narrated the situation to him, told him what he was going through at home, and he needed counsel. After he narrated the story, his father sighed because it sounded like something is, that has happened in his life before. 
He just sighed and said to him, he said, son, your mom and I left so many things unsaid. And after a while, we just didn't say anything anymore to each other. Said to him that because we left so many things uns unsaid, we broke connection gradually. And before we knew it, we were so far apart, we couldn't recover. When connection is broken gradually, people hardly realize it until it's too late. It will not be too late for you. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 44, it's a very common story there. It says Mary and Joseph took their son Jesus on an annual festival to Jerusalem. But the Bible says in verse 43, it says, when they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. It says, when they had finished the days, back to 43, when they had finished the days, it meant that some activities went on for those few days. And in the process of those activities for those few days, Mary and Joseph got so relaxed in their new environment that they gradually did not notice that their son was not following them everywhere. Because if the son had been in their company constantly, it would have been difficult for them to do what? to forget him on the day they were leaving. But they were used to the fact that because of the circumstances as the days goes on. And you see, remember they were going for a spiritual thing. But it says when they had finished the days, and we are still, our days are not finished, amen? In the course of their transaction for a period of time, Jesus Christ lingered away from them. But they were not conscious enough to realize that there was something missing. The Bible says in verse 44 that thinking that he was still with them, thinking that he was still with them, they started to travel alone. You will not travel alone. Amen. Thinking that he was still with them they went a day's journey for 24 hours. They were going, and that's why he said, when something happens gradually, the gradual process of separation started when? Those days, God bless you. It started those days. That was the gradual process of separation, those days. By the time they had gotten used to it, or they, did not, they were not sensitized anymore, they traveled for one whole day. I pray that if you are here tonight, your 24 hours of being without Jesus will end tonight. Amen. For 24 hours, they traveled without him, and then something happened to them. They just remembered. They remembered that there was this part of their journey that was essential that is not with them. I don't know because... I mean, biblically, we, we understand that Mary had other children. And considering the fact that Jesus Christ was about 12 at that time, maybe he's had other ones. But there was no mention of it. So I want to assume that they traveled with only one son. But when they realized that they had not seen him, they went around their relatives. Which is a logical thing to do, right? Of course, you want, to, you want to assume that in those days that they were gradually losing contact with him, Jesus was playing with the relatives. He was playing with familiar people, people that he was constantly used to. That's an assumption, which is a mean, it, it makes sense. But I believe that this statement has a far deeper meaning, spiritual meaning. Whenever you look 
lose your connection with Jesus, when you are really, really so turned off, the first place to look is amongst the people that are closest to you. And the reason being that the people that are closest to you are the ones that can make you so mad that you walk away from Jesus. The people that are closest to you can aggravate you. They can create emotional situations. It could be a loss of somebody close to you that you didn't want to die. It could be, I've seen pastors walk away from huge churches because they couldn't stand their wife anymore. They just walked away from the faith. When you find out that there's a connection that has been broken, the first place you must look are the people that are closest to you. People have looked for children in places they should not look for children. Family and friends. But then the Bible says they couldn't find him there. And they had to return to Jerusalem, which is the second thing you must understand. If you cannot find your source of break of connection within your most emotionally tormenting relationships, the next thing you must do, you must straight just back to the last major event in your life. And the last major event in their life was Jerusalem. But in your own life, it could be a major prayer that was not answered. It could be a loss of something that you really, really prayed for. It could be a loss of a job. It could be a loss of a breadwinner. It could be the failure of a career or a business. It could be something that was a major event in your life that made you slightly move away. And gradually you are moving away because of that event before you realize it, you are far away from Jesus. You must go back to that major last event in your life. So they had to go back to where? Jerusalem. But then the Bible says that in verse 45, that the journey that took them one day, verse 46, the journey that took them one day took them how many days to get back? Three days. And that tells me that each time you break connection, reconnection becomes progressively more difficult. They walked away, they traveled for one, one day. But to get back to that same spot took them three days. That's why the devil prefers a gradual disconnection. Because each time you break connection, your heart becomes progressively harder. So getting back to the, to the height of your emotional connection is difficult. When you see an emotional dislocation within a family or a couple, and they are trying to walk their way back, it becomes much more difficult to find love compared to what it was the first time. Are you with me? You did something, you, maybe you missed church, and all of a sudden, you missed Holy Communion. Then you started missing Wednesday service. Gradually, it creeps on you and it becomes an, a non-essential requirement in your life. It's a process. You stopped tithing and the heaven did not fall. You stopped praying and things were still happening. Each time you break connection, reconnecting back to where you are is very difficult. So it took them three days. Every fight, every argument at home, 
makes subsequent reconciliation more difficult. That's why connections are broken gradually. And then you wake up one morning, you are a stranger to the person you used to love. You will not be a stranger to Jesus. Amen. I want a better amen. amen. It's a gradual process. Oh, I will just sleep. I will pray later. I will do this later. And then before you know it, you are so far apart that the things that comes naturally to you before becomes a chore. And if you are not the beloved of God, you may have drifted to the point where your heart is so hardened there's no coming back. What do you think reminded Mary and Joseph after 24 hours? It was the Holy Spirit that was still present. That there was something in their life, they were joining, but there was something fundamental in their life that was not joining, joining with them. Maybe you are here this night. You can't feel him as close as you used to feel him. You can't hear his voice. You can't reach out and touch him anymore. And it didn't happen one day. It was a gradual process. You did not intentionally denounce him. You didn't walk up to him and say, Father, I don't want you anymore. No. It was a process that happened gradually. But you know in your heart of hearts that you are drifting away. Maybe you are here tonight. As you take this Holy Communion, even while we were praising today, and we were worshiping, and the, the Spirit of God was high, you did not feel anything. Maybe you're here tonight, and all of a sudden you feel more fear. You are more afraid. He's no longer there, or he's too far away. Or you are always worried about everything. Everything troubles you now. Maybe you have strayed away from your source. Maybe you are here tonight and you have a million unanswered questions all of a sudden. Everything in your life has become a redo and there's no solution. It may be that you have drifted quietly from your source of connection. I want to rise on your feet and just talk to God tonight. If you are not connected to the source, you have no resource. It's a gradual process. Most of us here would not walk up to him like the prodigal son and say, Father, I'm tired. This business with you is not profiting me. I want to do something else. Most of us will not do that, but gradually we drift. We drift to a point where we are less sensitive, we are less emotional, we are less touched, we feel less, we become casual about everything. We drift to a point where it is all about us, us, us. We drift to a point where we are like Mary and Joseph. They were chatting with themselves. They were content in their company. But the king of kings was no longer with them. Yes, they were happy in their company. They were chatting for 24 hours as if everything was normal. Maybe you are here tonight. Just go ahead and cry to God. Maybe you need to go back to that last event that broke the connection. Maybe you need to go back to your Jerusalem. Maybe you need to go back to that last event that changed your relationship. That thing that happened that made you feel less, careless. As that tonight, as you partake of the body and the blood of Jesus, there will be a reconnection. Your heart will beat again. Your throat will crack at his voice. Your ears will be open to hear him again. That loneliness will go away. That worry will cease. 
That fear will diminish. He's a God of wonder. Lord, connect me to you. And let me stay connected. 